Today's gospel reading, taken from John 14. After reading it, you, you kind of think, is it Father's Day or Mother's Day? It's all about the Father. It's all about the relationship between Jesus and the Father and the relationship that Jesus is inviting his disciples into. I remember a young girl who was engaged to get married tell me once. She said, I'm so excited for the day of the marriage because of the family he has. She said, he's a difficult person to handle at times. And yet what keeps me going is the description that he's given about his family. And I'm so excited about being with that family because that description is so beautiful. So in spite of him being a little difficult for, for her to handle, yet she's able to just forego that and she's looking forward to this, this relationship that she's going to share with the extended family. The home that has, that has been built in her mind and that she wants to embrace. I remember when, when my father was building our home back in Kerala. Um, being in Dubai, we were always in rented properties. And then it's always the dream of anybody who knows the, who knows the Malayalis, the Keralites will know that one of the greatest dreams they always have and one of the first things that they would always do is buy their own property and then build their own home. And so my father um, built his dream house. And, and the beautiful thing about my, my parents were they never kept us out of it, the three children. We always, we always were a part of the plan. And so even when the plans were drawn out, uh, they would tell us what is what, you know, which room is, is for whom. And, and everything was, was, was being built up. And as our parents kept saying that, and as my father kept saying that, in my mind, this whole, whole beautiful dream house came up as well. So it isn't just in my, in my father's mind, rather, it's in mine as well. Now remember, as the construction started and each layer of brick was, was put up, and my father, at the end of the day, my father would be there inside having a look at what's there. He would describe to me the French windows that will come up. He would describe to me about this room and, and the other room. And in my mind, there was this, this beautiful build-up of this wonderful home. And somehow I ended up with the responsibility of having to water that day's construction. I really wonder how my brother got away with it. I've still not given that a thought. I better start giving it a thought. But my, but my father kept saying all these things. And I would be watering the, the construction. And I don't think, there were days when I was, I was a bit lazy. There were, there were days when, when I might have struggled through it. But when I look back today, it was always days I had a lot of joy in watering the, 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 the construction. Maybe because of what my father built up in my mind about these, these beautiful dreams about this home. In today's gospel passage, we see Jesus building up this, this dream home. Now, mind you, we can, we can so wrongly kind of put an emphasis on one verse, which is, which is generally spoken about a lot, and that's John 14, verse, verse 2. In my father's house, there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? Now, we can kind of get, get stuck at that, that particular verse, because I know at every funeral, I speak about that particular room. And, and we have a tendency, the father has... There's in my father's house, there's this room that I'm preparing for you. But this, this gospel passage of today is not, is not to be restricted to just that, that one, little, well, one little verse. It's not just about that room. It's about that whole buildup of what that home is. Because in that home, it's all about Jesus and the relationship with the father. And everything that Jesus speaks about, the Father's house is about a beautiful relationship. If you actually look at, at last Sunday's reading, it was again a relationship that Jesus was speaking about when he said, I'm the good shepherd. 
And here now, Jesus is describing the father's house as this beautiful place of a relationship. where Everything is built up in a relationship. I am in the father, the father is in me. I'm one with the father. It's all a relationship. And Jesus is inviting us into that relationship. So the home that Jesus is speaking about, the father's house, is just this amazing bundle of relationships. This beautiful experience of a relationship. And when, when Thomas says, we don't know the way, Jesus says, I am the way. The relationship you share with me is the way to the Father's house. Philip would say, then, then show us the Father. That's all we need. Jesus again tells him, if you have seen me, you have seen the Father. They are again a relationship. Today's gospel passage doesn't actually, uh, I, I, would, I would find it a bit strange that it doesn't actually bring in verse 15 onwards, John 14, 15 onwards, because that actually completes the whole concept of this relationship, though that gospel passage is going to be taken next Sunday. But when you actually look at it, verse 15 onwards, then comes in the next little hero of our story, and that is the Spirit. If you love me, you will keep my commandments, and I will ask my Father, he will give you another advocate, to be with you forever and there starts the other relationship so it's all this building up of these amazing relationships with the trinity that we are supposed to have and us joining into that relationship and that is why the home is so beautiful that is why the room that jesus prepares for us is so beautiful it is this amazing home of relationships if you actually take this take it in contrast to the first home that God had for mankind, the Garden of Eden. There, everything was a relationship. The father sharing a relationship with Adam and Eve. And they were meant to be in that relationship. And you take everything as, as God created it, the first day, the second day, the third day, the fourth day, and God creating the, the earth and the, the animals and all the the wild things and giving it to human beings to have a relationship and the relationship that God shared with Adam and Eve. The days when they would go walking together. And what broke? What happened to that home at the Garden of Eden? What went wrong there? Again, it was the relationship. The relationship between God and Adam and Eve when they chose to have a relationship outside of that beautiful relationship with God, when they wanted to become like God because that is what Satan offered to them. And this is where, this is where Jesus, even when he's speaking about the sheep, he says, you would not understand because you don't belong to my flock. You don't belong in this relationship. You don't want to belong to this relationship. And that is what he would say as well when he speaks of the Holy Spirit. He says, they will not understand. In verse 17, John 14, verse 17, this is the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him, it doesn't know him. They are not, they're not prepared to be a part of the relationship. And this beautiful home that, that Jesus is showing us the beautiful home of a bundle of relationships with the Father, with the Son, with the Holy Spirit. And that is where we are entering into. That is what we are looking forward to. That beautiful union with the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit in that togetherness. And the foretaste of it is what we celebrate in our homes, what we celebrate in our church communities, in our parish communities. And that is why I would say what, what Pope Francis said recently about the online masses was so significant because he says there's a danger where we can think that sitting in our homes and watching a mass is, is as good as being a part of the church community. No, it is not. 
It is relationships. Relationships happen when we meet each other, when we speak to each other, when we share each other's joys and sorrows, not over a screen. And this is where, this is where we've, we've got to understand and ask ourselves, are we building up our homes, our parish communities as a foretaste of the home that we are preparing ourselves to enter into, a home of relationships. And this is why in the scriptures we read, the early Christian community in the Acts of the Apostles, led by the Holy Spirit, permitted themselves to be led by the Spirit and who's, who let the Spirit speak to them and guide them. The word tells us from Acts chapter, and Acts chapter 2 onwards, Acts chapter 2, verse 43 onwards. I would, I would go on from 42. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship and breaking of bread and the prayers. All came upon everyone because many wonders and signs were being done. But what attracted people more? All who believed were together, had their things in common. They would sell their possessions and goods, distribute the proceeds to all according to their needs. They spent time together in the temple, broke bread at home, ate their food with a glad and generous heart, praising God and having the goodwill of all the people. And so the Lord added to their numbers. That is what the early Christian community was. It was a foretaste of the home that Jesus described. They shared with one another. They had union with one another. They prayed together. Now, it doesn't mean that, that there weren't faults and mistakes, and that's what we see in the, in the first reading of today. In Acts chapter 7, Acts chapter 6, it speaks about the disciples and the Hellenists who complained against the Hebrews because the widows were being neglected in the daily distribution of the food. Oh well, so this, this does seem a little like our own parish communities. You'll have the little, little faults there, the little mistakes here, and the little ugly heads that, that keep cropping up of, of division. And here we see, they saw that the widows were being neglected, and so the Hellenists complained about it. So what did the twelve do? They prayed, they brought the community together and they said, we are not meant to be neglecting the word and so we will have the seven deacons. And then they were meant to, to bring or, or to look into, into what the widows would require. And then the word tells us very clearly in verse 7, the word of God continued to spread, the number of the disciples increased greatly. So the community carried on as this beautiful relationship. And that is what we should see as well. Even as we are moving towards Pentecost, letting the presence of the Spirit guide our Christian communities, guide our families as homes, which are foretastes of, of the beautiful home in heaven, all based on relationships. When we come into the church, when we come into our parish communities, all people with different cultures, different backgrounds, our different likes and dislikes in worship as well, different age groups. And we shouldn't look at our church communities as the place where I get everything that I want. It is only what satisfies me, no, what satisfies my brother because I share a relationship with him. What satisfies my sister because I share a relationship with her? Just as it's supposed to be in your own families as well. The first foretaste of the kingdom of God. The first foretaste of the home of the father. But I don't look in my family as to only what I need. Not my desire, just, just not my career or my choices. But what does my, my husband want? What is good for my my, my wife, what is good for my mother? What is good for my father? Because I share a relationship with them. And that is why a Christian home and a Christian community is a foretaste of that beautiful home of God's kingdom. 
because it is all based on relationships. And a relationship is never directed inward. A relationship is always directed outward, towards the other. And that is what Jesus is inviting us to. Even when the Lord says, you know me, you know the Father. I am the way, come through me and you will come to the Father. And there we will share a relationship, Father, Son, Holy Spirit and you. In this beautiful togetherness of giving and love. And unless and until we practice this in our own church communities and in our own homes, I don't think we will ever be prepared to enter into that beautiful home, the Father's house, to ever take our place in the Father's kingdom in the room that Jesus has set aside for us. So let us pray today, even as we are moving towards Pentecost, praying for the grace of the Holy Spirit to guide our homes, to guide our Christian communities. Every Christian community should be so strongly founded on the Holy Spirit. Asking the Holy Spirit to guide us, to absorb the negative emotions that we human beings keep showing time and again. So that our Christian communities will be this amazing bundle of relationships. Relationships that the Lord will be proud of. Saying that you are well prepared to enter into the home of all homes. The Father's home in his heavenly kingdom. Let's close eyes for a moment. Lord, as we prepare ourselves for that beautiful home you have invited us to. Lord, you have built it up in our hearts so beautifully. When you spoke of that room, that special place, that beautiful home filled with the presence of the Heavenly Father, the loving Son, and the comforting Spirit. O oh Lord, we pray that as we make this journey on this earth and you give us opportunities to have a foretaste of your home in your kingdom, give us the grace to cherish the relationships within our homes, within our church communities, and to let the Spirit work in them so that they might become amazing instruments of your grace. Like the early Christian community where people saw love, compassion, joy, happiness, within the Christian community, they might see it within our homes and within our own parish communities. Give us the grace so that many will be added to this home to glorify your name, to glorify the Father's love, to glorify the Spirit's presence. Amen. Oh,